the U.S. has shot down a Chinese surveillance balloon off the coast of South Carolina. The Pentagon confirmed the balloon, which was being used by the People's Republic of China in an attempt to surveil strategic sites in the continental United States, was brought down above U.S. territorial waters. Several assets have entered the area to recover its debris. The balloon entered the Alaska Joint Operation Area on January 27, Canadian airspace on January 30th, and the continental U.S. over northern Idaho on January 31st. The Pentagon has identified at least one other surveillance balloon currently transiting Latin America, the official said. These balloons are all part of a PRC fleet of balloons developed to conduct surveillance operations, which have also violated the sovereignty of other countries, the official said, adding that balloons have been spotted in countries spanning five continents in recent years. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. military took out the Chinese surveillance balloon. Let's get into the details. In a statement after the shootdown, Secretary of Defense General Lloyd J. Austin III said fighters assigned to U.S. Northern Command shot down a high-altitude surveillance balloon launched by and belonging to the People's Republic of China PRC, over the water off the coast of South Carolina in U.S. airspace. Austin said, On Wednesday, President Biden gave his authorization to take down the surveillance balloon as soon as the mission could be accomplished without undue risk to American lives under the balloon's path. He added, after careful analysis, U.S. military commanders had determined downing the balloon while over land posed an undue risk to people across a wide area due to the size and altitude of the balloon and its surveillance payload. Today's deliberate and lawful action demonstrates that President Biden and his national security team will always put the safety and security of the American people first while responding effectively to the PRC's unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. Austin also thanked the Canadian government for its assistance in tracking the balloon in its part of the North American Airspace Defense Command. In remarks to the press pool, President Biden confirmed he ordered the balloon shot down on Wednesday once it could be done without risk of collateral damage. While the operation seems simple at first, it's not so. The balloon was about the size of three buses and had many surveillance equipments like cameras, sensors, and radars. Its fall could have potentially led to an accident and there were concerns that falling debris could endanger civilians. The Federal Aviation Administration ordered a ground stop at three airports in the Carolinas for national security initiatives and imposed a temporary flight restriction TFR, for a swath of airspace off the coast as the balloon approached the coastline. The FAA's closure halted flight operations at Charleston International Airport, Myrtle Beach International Airport, and Wilmington International Airport. These moves and increased military air activity came after President Joe Biden said, We are going to take care of it earlier Saturday in Syracuse, New York, when asked about the balloon. The FAA ended its temporary flight restriction and ground stops just after 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Two F-22s were thought to have been pressed into action. An F-22 Raptor from Langley Air Force Base in Virginia fired a single missile into the Chinese surveillance balloon at 2.39 p.m., causing the balloon to crash into the ocean. Developed by the aerospace and defense giant Lockheed Martin, the F-22 Raptor first took flight on September 7, 1997, over Marietta, Georgia. F-22 is still the most potent fighter jet in the world, even though more than two decades have passed since its first flight. It's to be noted that even today, F-22 can't be exported to any country as per American federal law which is a stark contrast to other fighters, including the F-35. Raptor has a top speed of more than Mach 2 and can fly at a max altitude of 65,000 feet. A Raptor is typically equipped with air-to-air -air missiles, including the AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles, 
and AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles. As per reports, a Sidewinder was used in this case. A Sidewinder missile can reach Mach 2.5 and each missile costs about $380,000. The missile can be queued by the F-22's powerful AN-APG-77 radar and can lock onto a target just by tracking its pilot's eyes. It's possible that it had no warhead since it only needed to puncture the balloon for it to fall. This would be the F-22's first kill. Northcom confirmed that the F-22's, flying with the call signs Frank 01 and Frank 02 was an homage to World War I flying ace and U.S. Army Air Service Medal of Honor recipient First Lieutenant Frank Luke Jr., better known as the Arizona Balloon Buster, who destroyed 14 German balloons and four aircraft. Senior U.S. military and defense officials say the shootdown occurred at the first available opportunity to do so without threat to those on the ground. The U.S. took steps to stop and mitigate the balloon's collection, neutralizing its intelligence value and preventing it from sending data back to China as it passed over sensitive sites. It was noted that there were three previously undisclosed intrusions by Chinese surveillance into U.S. airspace but never of this duration. Two of these incursions came during the President Donald Trump administration, with the third early in the Biden administration. Debris from the balloon fell in only 47 feet of water, much shallower than expected. There are multiple Navy and Coast Guard vessels in the area, but no timeline for recovery from a debris field spanning seven miles. Federal Bureau of Investigation is also involved in this. The takedown will likely enable the U.S. to recover sensitive Chinese equipment. It's interesting to note that experts believe that the shootdown was delayed so that the U.S. military could examine the balloon and its spying capabilities, which an official described as broad. This episode will likely escalate tensions between the U.S. and China, especially if the debris are determined to have potent spying systems, which will most likely be the case. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.